Vitek. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer at uh, Red Hat. And I'd like to introduce you to the USB Guard project. And I want to just start with this story of how I got interested so much that I came to the school. And this is probably the oldest uh, reference to a, uh, a USB based uh, attack uh, on, a, on a company. It's not a black hat attack, uh, it's actually, uh, it was, uh, it was actually uh, ordered by a customer from a penetration testing company. Uh, and they have uh, told them to not to use social media or emails or some the usual attack vectors. Uh, so they have to think about something else. And they actually uh, did something which uh, years later they are calling uh, Bitch USB. But they did it in a like, uh, creative way by uh, modifying the hardware. Uh, they took apart a mouse, USB mouse, uh, put inside a USB hub and a USB sound drive and connected it to the wire the mouse was using to, to communicate with the computer. So, and they then wrapped it in, inside a nice box and uh, gave it to somebody uh, in the company as a, as a gift. So, and naturally, uh, who would uh, think that uh, such a device would uh, do something to the computer? So they connected it uh, and uh, using the usual outer and the vector uh, the system actually runs some malware from, from the device. So you connected a mouse inside your computer and it suddenly uh, connects to some on drive to your system and runs something. That's uh, pretty unusual. Idea. So, uh, as I said, uh, this uh, is like a primitive way of doing the bad USB attack which uh, was presented in 2014. Uh, so let's uh, Show some uh, 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 to the usual technicals which are based on the uh, So, uh, before we get to actually to uh, explain what the USB is, uh, most, uh, the most used integrator is, as I said, uh, the altering, some altering feature of the type of itself, and just connecting uh, a, a Storage device to the, to the computer and relying on the user or on the outer run feature to run the malware. Uh, the solution to this is to, of course, to disable outer run, which is outer run is uh, a strict feature. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and to educate users and not to run uh, software from random devices. Uh, so, what can you do uh, as an attacker if uh, somebody uh, educates the users? and uh, disable some run. You can uh, uh, so emulate how to run using uh, uh, the USB protocol itself. You can be the, uh, like, the device can be the user himself, like, uh, typing uh, commands and moving the mouse uh, on the computer, but uh, automatically from the device. So that's uh, uh, what I call rogue uh, USB devices. Uh, that are like devices that uh, like uh, uh, USB cell phone drives or something that uh, you wouldn't expect that uh, uh, you know, uh, execute some uh, mouse movements or keystrokes on a computer. Uh, but uh, the USB protocol actually allows that. It allows that uh, one device can act as uh, multiple devices at once. And uh, uh, actually, these uh, uh, devices are you can buy you can buy them from eBay. They call the Tinsy USB drive by and so there are other <laughs> similar devices available. So uh, another attack vector is the reprogramming of USB devices. Uh, uh, that's what we call that USB today. Uh, that's uh, like a uh, as I explained, the uh, modify, modifying the uh, USB mouse by hardware means, this is by modifying in the same way but by software means. Uh, it, it requires uh, knowing the protocol and how the manufacturer uh, uses uh, to send firmware to the device. So we have to reverse engineer and it's a bit harder. 
like it was done by the guys who present uh, who uh, created the bad USB attack uh, on some uh, uh, use, uh, commonly used uh, chipsets. Um, and uh, the last but not least uh, is the uh, attack vector and uh, USB drivers itself. So uh, usually, um, or in Linux, in the Linux kernel, there is uh, nothing that uh, prevents to uh, uh, connect uh, a, uh, any, any USB device and have the drivers of the USB device loaded automatically. You can, you can blacklist them, but you have to do it manually and you have to know it beforehand. So what, uh, what, what, you, what you don't want to load, and if somebody uh, creates a new driver, then it's, it's totally and you have to edit the blacklist. And uh, there is actually a CV, uh, quite serious one, uh, from 2013, where there was uh, a uh, heat-based uh, buffer auto farm and a USB device driver. And it was definitely found by the fuzzing of the USB drivers. And uh, as I heard that uh, there are some uh, non-public ones in the queue. So, uh, if you want to somehow solve it uh, in your company or on your desktop com computer, you can use uh, uh, one of uh, two uh, uh, things. You can either uh, uh, completely disable your uh, USB ports, either by uh, BIOS means or uh, by ripping out the, the connectors or gluing your devices inside the connectors, or you can use actually a USB guard. So this is a uh, like one minute uh, how to uh, set up your uh, how to set up set up USB guard in your system. Uh, if you are using Fedora, then uh, you can just uh, paste these commands. Uh, if you are using Ubuntu or something else, then you have to replace the first command to install actually the packages or compile them. They are not available on your solution. Uh, using the second line, you can uh, generate uh, a policy for your devices uh, that are uh, connected to, to your system at the moment the command is executed. So it creates a whitelist for, for the connected devices, and nothing else will be allowed to connect to your system. If some, some uh, uh, other device that is not known to the policy of your USB guard is connected, and if you run the applet, then you get a notification, okay, there is a new device, it has these interfaces, would you want to allow it or not? Or do you want to reject it? So, if you allow it, then what happens is that uh, it will allow uh, the, the kernel to continue with enumeration of the interfaces on the new device and load the uh, uh, interface drivers. Otherwise, uh, it will just block, block the device node and not touch any any codes uh, whatsoever in any uh, USB driver, uh, but the USB core driver. So it's the only only uh, driver exposed uh, to the USB device. Uh, you can also reject the device. It means uh, that it will be uh, like uh, the device node will be also uh, <coughs> removed from from the system. Like uh, the kernel won't know about it anymore. You have to like uh, uh, disconnect the device and connect it again. So uh, this is the high-level overview of USB guard. It's a typical Unix daemon uh, which is uh, running all the time and listening for a uh, of uh, notifications about new new connected devices and about uh, the changes on the devices. And it relies also on the second feature of the Linux kernel, and that's the Linux uh, USB device authorization feature. Uh, it's a, a Boolean flag for allowing the the like the continuation of uh, uh, the um, USB interface driver lo loading. So uh, it's uh, thanks to these two features uh, of, the, of the kernel. Uh, the USB card can work as it as it does. <coughs> also, there are optionally uh, the CLI and UA packs 
uh, which you don't have to run, but uh, it's much easier than to interact with the team when you have to edit the files by yourself and generate the policies and write them. So, there are some uh, of the uh, advanced and planned features. Uh, the basic uh, functioning of USB guard is uh, just by listing and by listing uh, on, uh, on matching the uh, device attribute that, uh, that the device uh, exports to the system. Uh, that, that, that is uh, the, the list of the requested interfaces that uh, for the to interact with the system uh, and some serial numbers, supported protocols, uh, uh, and uh, like the basic stuff that the USB specification. Uh, Does the devices to, to uh, But you can use actually uh, the, the one of these uh, advanced features to, to make like uh, more complex policies or more more intelligent policies. Uh, one of them is uh, rule, rule conditions. Uh, you can match like the, uh, the actual uh, the current conditions of the system, like uh, the context of the connected devices. So you can write a, a rule uh, which. Uh, uh, like allows a device only if another device is connected or not. Uh, it uh, allows you to like uh, check uh, what the time of local time of the system, so you can allow a device uh, if it's working hours or not. And some other basic uh, conditions are implemented, but uh, the list of the conditions uh, is kind of expanding. Uh, so I and I'm looking for use cases to implement uh, the others. Uh, currently, I'm working on USB I/O monitoring. Uh, that's I/O monitoring like in uh, uh, input and output data and bandwidth. So you can, uh, uh, like, after it's implemented, you can say, uh, "Okay, I have this thumb drive, and I don't want that people upload the data uh, to the thumb drive. They can read from that, but they can uh, uh, they cannot uh, upload any." Data or only small amount of data which are required for communicating with the device. Uh, that's uh, good for uh, the data exfiltration use case. You, you don't want to like uh, if people uh, uh, exfiltrate data from your company on your USB device. But you, 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 you want to uh, let them use uh, fund drives to actually distribute some data in the company or on the servers. Uh, another uh, plan feature is uh, device signing. That's actually the original idea of the for the implementation of the USB kernel authorization uh, feature. Uh, but the guy who implemented it, uh, he didn't actually continue uh, to, to, uh, to you know, like actually implement the, the, the device signing. Um, another. The uh, thing I, I like to like, improve is the UI of the applet. As you can see, uh, it's like uh, not really useful uh, to see some numbers here, which represent the uh, interfaces that uh, the device uh, wants to uh, communicate with. Um, so uh, ideally, you want to translate uh, these uh, numbers into some human readable strengths to, to know uh, what what the device, uh, what the interface number represents, whether it's a keyboard or mouse or, or a network card, <laughs> such a thing. And uh, of course, there are limitations to, to this solution because uh, the USB uh, any USB device can be fake uh, and cloned. So if somebody if you create a policy that allows a USB keyboard to be connected to your system, and somebody can just uh, take the keyboard, clone it, and he can then reprogram the firmware uh, to, to like insert some uh, open key slots or something. So all he needs to pass the policy is uh, actually to have the metadata of the, uh, of the device, uh, like the serial number, the vendor ID, the product ID, and you can. Uh, actually, you don't have to, with some devices, you don't have to uh, steal them. You just, it, it's just enough to look at them and then uh, look up the information on, on the, on the uh, manufacturer page. Uh, 
So, uh, because usually the uh, the USB devices uh, do not export uh, serial numbers, like thumb drives usually do, but USB keyboards they are just empty or they are same for all all the uh, all the products of the company. They're just like one, two, three, four, just like some uh, value. Uh, so it's uh, it's quite uh, hard to actually uh, distinguish two pieces of the same product from each other from the point of view USB guard or from the point of uh, the program. Another problem is uh, when those uh, The interface types have a hierarchy, a standard hierarchy, uh, and some vendors do not like uh, do not follow this hierarchy. They, they use the special value that uh, says, okay, this is a vendor-specific type or the vendor-specific driver, and you don't know what's in there. So if you, if you have like, a bunch of these devices, then it's, uh, it's not a good idea to actually uh, use them in your policies and allow them. Because uh, like somebody can exploit the, the fact that uh, it allows uh, this vendor-specific thing and you can uh, create a own device and uh, attack your system using uh, software. Uh, USB keyboards are especially uh, problematic because, as I said, they don't export the serial number, so you cannot distinguish them uh, from each other. <coughs> uh, I, have, I think I have some time. So I will show you some example policies. Uh, I didn't want to show, that, show them uh, before because uh, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, it looks scary uh, to, to have some bunch of lines uh, in a strange language. Uh, but actually it's uh, quite easy if you, like it, if you are just a uh, regular uh, notebook user and you, all you want to, to use is uh, RUSB phone drives, then you can write this one line in the internal policy and it will allow only phone drives and nothing else. So if uh, somebody inserts a phone drive with a keyboard inside, then uh, it won't be allowed because uh, the system sees that there are two interfaces on the system, on the, on the device. And this rule uh, only allows uh, only one interface to be on the USB. There are some other examples. You can play Russian roulette uh, with USB devices. It's a special condition that uh, on each evaluation returns uh, like a random true or false with the, the specified probability. So you insert your device and it's rejected uh, with the uh, high probability. This is a CLI usage uh, example. You can, from the command line, you can list the devices, list the rules, or append new rules. So it's quite easy to interact with the demon. That way. And that's all. Thank you, Daniel. Um, okay. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. I have a quick question first. And does this work on servers as well? Yes, it does. But you have to run the demo Yeah, might not be desired. So many of the USB guard is blocking the device. Is there theoretically any room for malicious code to be run out, blow it out, or blow the driver? Uh, assuming it's blocked, then the only uh, driver that's interacting uh, with the device is actually the USB core driver. And if there is an exploit, then yeah, it's not so much exposed. But I think it's so much exposed, uh, the driver is so much exposed that there's a project to like, uh, pass them. So it's, uh, there's a small probability that there is a bug in the 
Ja, dat is Enumerates a couple of compromises, right? So, would it be possible to be able to see uh, uh, multiple devices are connected to a certain port? Yes, yes. Yeah, true. Uh, that's actually uh, the main. I was saying, if the latency device would be connected, and like there would be three lines of each representing a different interface, uh, like a uh, this is a keyboard. And the keyboard uh, the uh, next as a keyboard. So this is a interface to the system. And uh, the mouse will be something so maybe it would be an idea to show the currently accepted the devices in this world. Maybe if you have a double uh, already accepted the UBT. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. If, if you accept the UBT as it is, as you see, then if somebody connects another UBT, which is supposed to another device, you can see the point of view. It's a completely different device from the point of view of the other. But I mean, from the user's perspective, I just think oh, it's yeah, so that's why you explain what it is and more than the world is I'm just to ask you, you to do something to the Yes, uh, that makes some communications on the point that the other is not the key. Is that a good uh, thing? I don't think it's a good thing. I think it's like on the bottom of the bar. Do you feel it's not bad? Do you feel it's not bad? Yes. Do you feel it's not bad? Yes. So it gives me the right to do something on the bottom of the bar. What we um, found out very quickly was not the technical, like solving the problem on a technical level, but having the proper policies, as yeah. this is a very, well, difficult thing to achieve uh, or to, to make work well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to meet you and I think you should talk. Right. And um, what I actually wanted to ask is, uh, do you know the status of, uh, the, of Linux's uh, capability of blocking interfaces or allowing interfaces only rather than devices? Uh, at this moment, there is uh, uh, the granularity is only on the device level. Okay. You cannot uh, like if you uh, if there would be more interfaces, you can allow one and block the other. But uh, I guess uh, it's uh, because of the way the, uh, the drivers are implemented. You can only have like the generic USB core driver, which creates the generic device node uh, with the metadata that the USB protocol needs. But once, once you get uh, down uh, or up the level of uh, them, you, you, you would have to modify all of the drivers to, to insert the flag in there. We have time for one final question up here. No, there's a problem here. It's the, the USB key got a massive block. I can't click those buttons. So we're going to need this is just some way of entering a password using the device before you, before using the keyboard, yes. before you actually yes. 
the connected to the main X server. And that suggests a solution for USB keyboards. Focus keyboards don't have the user's password. Yeah. So, so now it's integrated to the X server, uh, etc. The question is like how you can uh, click on, or, on something uh, or write something if you don't have the device at all, uh, if you don't have a keyboard at all. And that's why, that's one of the reasons I implemented the room conditions. You can uh, have, like download the first keyboard which should be connected, but then the condition like uh, uh, tells you that, or tells the USB system not to connect any other keyboard. Thanks. So, no matter the port or, or no matter what, uh, no other keyboard, if one is already allowed, then you can connect another one. That's like implementable on the, on the policy level. Okay, I'll take your time, so thank you, Daniel.